hear the testimony of a brother Jim Stock uh, in the name of Jesus. If he can put his camera and uh, unmute uh, his mic as well in the name of Jesus. And he would share with us uh, what the Lord has done for him and for his wonderful family in Jesus' name. He looks handsome. Hallelujah. <laughs> Today. <laughs> to you, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. The check's in the post, Jerry. Check's in the post. <laughs> okay, folks. Um, back around, uh, I'm going to go back a few years, back to around uh, March 2018. I'd been unemployed just before that. I was working a job in Glasgow, and it was a horror, but it was one of these small companies. It was a bully who ran it, and I was subjected daily to bullying and undermining, and I hated the job. And actually, it got so bad, I just went on the sick one day and didn't go back. And it's, I've never done that in my life before. But you get a point where um, it was intolerable. And Nelly said to me one day, it was so bad. Um, I was shaving in the morning, and I was actually vomiting into, into the sink with just the stress and worry of going to work. And Nelly said to me one day, why are you putting yourself through this? Just, just give it up. And I said, well, we've got, got car to pay, we've got the mortgage and other bills. I'm responsible. She said, no, it's, it's, it's killing you. So I, I just went on the sick, and after about six or seven weeks, I just resigned from it, which meant I was, I was really not working. I, I made myself uh, redundant, per se. So only four weeks passed, and I started in a job in March 18, 2018. And again, it was another small company, um, 65 people, and it was a great job. Nice people, friendly people, no bullying, no bullying and no carry on. It was just straight, straight working and a great atmosphere. And I really enjoyed it. I was really enjoying it. But unfortunately, the, the, the financial situation of the company wasn't too great. And in March 2019, I got made redundant, which was a big disappointment. Um, really, nothing I had done, the company was in a bit of trouble. And at that point, uh, I thought about going back to work and I, and I thought of sending CVs out at my age and, and jumping through hoops at interviews and people interviewing you have only got maybe 20% of the knowledge and experience that I've got in my particular in area of expertise. I thought, I can't be bored with that, kind of jumping through hoops for people. And so I decided just to retire in, in March uh, 2019. So I'm, I'm giving up. And um, I got a month into it. Uh, until April 2019, and I had this recurring cough. I'd been going on for about at least two months um, before I, I, I stopped work. And then in, in, in April 2019, for another month, and my mother kept at me, get to the doctors, get to the doctors, go and see the doctor. You see that advert on the TV of Alec Ferguson, he lost both his parents to cancer. Go and get checked, go and get checked. I basically just gave up. Um, arguing with my mother about it and I thought I'll go to the doctors and cut a long story short I went to the doctors and the, the cough was, was nothing to do with you know, what was wrong with me but I had some other issues which I spoke to the doctor about and that kind of started the big wheel turning with the NHS and I was diagnosed with, with prostate, advanced prostate cancer um, which means it spread out the prostate and into other parts of the body it's in bones and in lymph nodes and I got through all sort of diagnosis at cameras and places that you don't want to have cameras. And um, they told me I was at stage four cancer. Well, stage four is the end of the line. Stage There is no stage five. Stage four is, is, is the end of the line, per se. So um, I thought, sugar, this is, <laughs> this is not my plans. Um, it's, uh, I didn't vote for this. I didn't uh, volunteer for it. I never signed this contract. So I went through the treatment, and uh, the treatment started about uh, September, I think it was, September 29th. I went through all the treatments and diagnosis and biopsies and all this sort of stuff. We, we took a late holiday that year and uh, went away to Tenerife for a week. And uh, funny enough, they, um, we'd, I just, the plane had just landed in Tenerife, and I, I switched my phone on, and there was a message from my old boss saying, how are you doing? How's things? Uh, I've got a job uh, come up. Um, it's only part time, 20 hours a week. Do you fancy it? I thought, great. It was a company I'd just left before, nine months before, six months before. 
So and it was part time, and I thought, yeah, I'm going back to that. So I started back and went to work, and I told them, listen, I've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. I'm going to have to get through treatment. And they said, that's fine. We'll just, we'll just, you manage it, and we'll manage it, and, and we work through it together. So my treatment started in, in August of that year, 2019, late August. And uh, I made up my mind. I was going to fight this. I, I'm not accepting this this deal. This is a, a bad deal. So uh, we worked through it. And the days I got my, my chemotherapy, I went through six sessions of chemotherapy, which isn't too pleasant. The chemotherapy itself is not tough. It's the after effects once you've had it. wasn't too pleasant. But um, I made it a point of saying, I'm not giving up. I'm going to fight this. And uh, the day I had the chemo, I took the day off. But the day after it, I went to work as normal and worked through it. And up until uh, I'd say had six sessions. And then December 2019, uh, the treatment ended. And uh, after that, just shortly after, about February 2020, I met Jerry. Jerry came to the house to, to um, baptize Nelly in the house here. So we met Jerry and we chatted and explained the situation. And Jerry gave me some track, Bible tracks to read, and I've actually got them here. I, I typed them up on an A4 sheet, and I printed them off and I laminated them uh, just to, 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 to help me. And the one that I remember most was uh, Psalms chapter 118, verse 17. And it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And he gave me other ones. One was Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. And the other one, he gave me four in total. The third one was Psalms chapter 103, verses 1 to 3. And it's, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who he heals all your diseases? And the fourth one uh, was Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and I will take your sickness away from the midst of you. So that was back in um, February 2020. And soon after that, I started joining uh, the prayers with Nelly and attending I've never actually physically attended the, the church in Glasgow. It's always been online. So we went to the Bible class on a Wednesday and, and the church on a Sunday and the healing service on a Saturday. And uh, what happened beyond that, uh, see, I was back to the company I was working in. It was a great company. But then March 2020, COVID appeared its ugly head. And uh, the project I was working on got suspended. Um, it was quite a big project, and the board of the company in Sweden decided to keep the money in their pocket. And because of the COVID and the social distancing, uh, they, they put all this uh, surplus people out of the office, and, and my contract was suspended. And that was fine. Um, so during that time, uh, I get regularly, every month, I go for hormone injections as part of the treatment. The chemotherapy is over now. It finished in December um, 19, and all through since then, I got a monthly hormone injection, and I go for checkups. The, the consultant, I see the top consultant in Scotland, um, a guy uh, called Dr. David Dodds, and he deemed that I had to go see him uh, every every four months, and I go regularly. A couple of days before that, you get all bloods taken at the, 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 the GP surgery and they analyze them, and then you go and meet with the, the consultant, and, and he gives you the results of it. And it's, it, it, it's nerve shattering. For those two weeks before that meeting, it's, it, it drives you crazy because there's, there's only good news or bad news. There's no gray area in between. So you're either going to get good news and feel great, or it's going to be an absolute disaster. So it's quite stressful. So um, and in the meantime, I've continued praying the, the, the prayers from the a crib sheet that I made up and attending uh, Bible classes on a Wednesday. And then uh, my last visit to see the consultant was, was yesterday, Friday. And uh, so I'm now like 14 or 15 months from the end of the, the chemotherapy. And when I went yesterday, they, they analysed all the bloods and the cancer's undetectable in my body. 
and all the other functions they check for the liver function, kidney function, bone density are all normal. There's no no problems at all. So, so I praise the Lord and 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 thank the Lord and I thank Jerry and all the people that's prayed for me that I've survived to fight another day. So, so that's my testimony and, and I praise the Lord and say hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jim. 